Hello students. In our previous video, we learned that trigonometry is only related to right angled triangles. We defined trigonometry as the branch of mathematics that deals with the angles and ratios of sides related to these angles. So let us say this is a right angled triangle. Right angle at B. Let us call this side which is opposite to B as B. Similarly, this side as A and C which is opposite to the respective angles. So now, what can we measure here? Yes, these three sides and these three angles. But one we already know, isn't it? Yes, this angle which is B, it measures 90. So we have two angles and three sides. I already said that trigonometry deals with the ratios of the sides of right triangles. So let us take the ratios of these three sides. What can we write? Yes, we take a ratio of this A and B as A upon B. We can also take ratios of B and C as B by C and similarly A by C. We can also write these three in reverse like this, isn't it? B by A, C by B and C by A. A by B now is B by A or C by B is now B by C, A by C now becomes C by A. But wait, I gave this triangle the name ABC and these sides as A, B and C. But you may give it the name BAC and the sides like this. Or someone else can come up with a different name such as PQR and some other sides. So then what about these ratios? How do we know what to take? So what do we do? Is instead of this A, B's and C's, we give them specific names. Okay, so naming this side is really easy, isn't it? You know it already, right? It is hypotenuse. We know that hypotenuse is the triangle's longest side and that it is opposite to 90 degree angle. Now what about these two sides? To name them, we'll take the help of reference angle. So this is our reference angle theta. The side opposite to the angle is named so. Yes, I mean this side will be named the opposite side. Now, eventually this side is also standing straight vertically and perpendicular to the horizontal line, isn't it? It is also called as perpendicular in some of your textbooks. Well, both are correct. The opposite side is also the perpendicular for this triangle. On the same lines, the side adjacent to this angle would be adjacent side. Now this side also is a base on which this triangle is resting. So this also becomes base. Thus, the adjacent side is also base for this triangle. But wait, technically, hypotenuse is also the adjacent side to this angle theta, isn't it? Yes, but we have already given it a name, so we will take it as it is, as hypotenuse and not the adjacent side. So now for this triangle ABC, we have AB or C as the opposite side or perpendicular, BC or A as the adjacent side or base and AC or B as the hypotenuse for this reference angle. Okay, now let's replace this A, B and C with the respective names. The first ratio is the adjacent upon hypotenuse. The second one is opposite upon hypotenuse. Third one is opposite upon adjacent. And the other three are inverse of this ratio as you can see. Now you will think, oh, do we really need to remember all these six ratios? Don't worry. We just need to remember these three. As you can see, the other three are just the inverse. In fact, to make your life simple, 
you just have to remember two ratios. The third that you see here is actually one divided by two. Yes, if you take the division of first to second, you see that hypotenuse, hypotenuse gets cancelled and we get the ratio as opposite upon adjacent. Is this right? Absolutely. So actually, we just need to remember only these two ratios, which is opposite upon hypotenuse and adjacent upon hypotenuse. Now, what about naming these ratios? Well, we just named the sides of these triangles. Now, what about naming these three ratios? So, the first one is sine. The second one is cosine. And third one is tan. And these three reverses are cosec, the reverse of sine, sec, the reverse of cos, and cot, the reverse of tan. So what we have is sine is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Cos is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And tan is the ratio of opposite side to the adjacent side. Cosec can be written as 1 upon sine and is the ratio of hypotenuse to the opposite side. Likewise, sec is written as 1 upon cos and is the ratio of hypotenuse to the adjacent side. Similarly, the ratio of adjacent side to the opposite side is the cot, which is nothing but 1 upon tan. Now, what if I change this reference angle to this one? Let us call it as alpha. Now, with this angle, as alpha as the reference angle this side BC will become the opposite side and this AB will be the adjacent side or if I turn this triangle like this now this BC which is the opposite side is now the perpendicular and the AB which is the adjacent side is base of this triangle and now can you write all six trigonometric ratios for me? Pause the video and give it a shot. So always remember that opposite side is the side that is against or in front of the reference angle and the adjacent side will be the side near to this reference angle. And these six ratios for this reference angle will be something like this. Isn't it? Sin alpha will be the ratio of BC to AC. Cos alpha is the ratio of AB to AC. And tan alpha is the ratio of BC to AB. And the remaining three are simply the inverse of these three ratios. Well, remembering the six names and ratios are quite cumbersome, right? But, well, you can simply remember these three words to remember them. It's swa, ka, twa. Or simply, so ka, twa, where S is for sine, O for opposite, H for hypotenuse, that is sine is the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. Similarly, C for cosine, A for adjacent, and H for hypotenuse, T for tan, O and A for opposite and adjacent sides. There is one another way of remembering these three ratios. Let me give you one rhyme. Some people have curly brown hairs through proper brushing. You can remember this rhyme with reference to perpendicular and base like this. Okay, now moving ahead students, sine is an abbreviation for sine, cos is an abbreviation for cosine and tangent is an abbreviation for tan. While these three reverse ratios are also similarly abbreviated for cosecant, secant and cotangent. But wait for a second, 
Look at the words tangent and secant in the names. What does it remind you of? Yes, exactly. They are related to circles and not triangles. Actually, understanding trigonometry was not possible without circles. And so some of the terms used in trigonometry are related to circles. Triangles don't have secants and tangents, do they? Absolutely not. Circles have them. We call that tangent is a line that touches the circle at one point and secant is a line which cuts the circle or touches the circle at two different points. Precisely, secant passes through the circle while tangent passes outside the circle just from the edge of the circle. So these names relate a lot more to circles than triangles. So how come they are used in branch of mathematics, that is trigonometry, that deals only with triangles? Well, think about this question, we will answer you in our next video.